Welcome everybody to this episode of Cube Conversations coming to you live from Wikibon World Headquarters in Mamba, Massachusetts. Uh, VMworld wrapped up just last week, so we're going to talk today with my colleague Stu Miniman about some of the announcements made there. Uh, specifically, VMware announced their own flavor of OpenStack. Uh, Stu, tell us a little bit about that announcement, uh, and then maybe we can get into some of the analysis about what it means for the market. Yeah, Jeff, thanks so much. And of, of course, VMworld, so many announcements, such a big ecosystem. I wanted to really tease apart and unpack uh, this uh, announcement, which uh, they called it, it's VMware Integrated OpenStack, or VIO, uh, which as you mentioned, is really uh, v VMware's distribution of OpenStack, which they've announced really in beta. Um, and everybody's trying to say, is this an offensive move? Is it a defensive move? What does it mean to the existing players? So, you know, let's get into it. Well, so, so talk about, yeah, the ecosystem. I mean, where does this fit in? What are the competitors in this market doing? And how does this kind of uh, sync with uh, what we're else we're seeing in the market? Yeah, so so it's it's always a little bit nuanced when we talk about VMware because it, it's all about competition these days, and there are some people that VMware is partnering very closely with, and others that uh, they're actively at war in these days. So first of all, let's step back and remember that OpenStack, of course, is not like a product, and it's not a company. Uh, it's really it is an open source initiative, and there's software that goes along with this. So there's many projects that fit under. Uh, uh, OpenStack, and together it builds, of course, a stack that you can build uh, solutions with, and you can build public clouds or you can build private clouds with those. So, uh, you know, big companies like IBM and HP have put a lot of money into this and say, we're going to stand up public clouds using OpenStack as our components. There are distributions out there uh, that are allowing customers to create their own private infrastructure using OpenStack. And, uh, of course, VMware is partnering with a number of players. They're not just going to do it on their own. So in the announcement for VMware's integrated OpenStack, uh, they are working with uh, Canonical uh, and uh, Mirantis, who Mirantis uh, is, uh, you know, from, from all numbers I've heard, probably uh, the number one distribution out there, in tw at least in 2013, sales numbers for people that have that bought that distribution and deployed, but there are many, many other distributions out there. Uh, Red Hat, of course, is a big player in this space. Um, I mentioned HP before, and there was even VMware made an announcement with HP on how they can build the software-defined data center, and in some ways they're trying to have a, a more forceful position uh, as other companies like Cisco uh, are, are more and more engaged in, in what's going on uh, in OpenStack. So what is VMware's motivation here? So when I think of VMware, I mean, I think of them as the virtualization company. They help you deploy essentially private clouds. Yes. So now we've got OpenStack, which to me, uh, from my outsider uh, perspective would think, that's a bit of a com competition there. Why would they invest in this? What's their motivation? Yeah, great, great question, Jess. So first of all, of course, VMware has pivoted to hybrid cloud because we know not everything's going to live on site. Uh, and what was originally called vCloud Hybrid Service was rebranded as vCloud Air uh, fr from VMware, and there's a renewed effort to really work closely with service providers and, and other channel partners to build that out. Um, and so the f for the open stack specific question, first of all, VMware actually was heavily involved early on in some of OpenStack, specifically from the networking standpoint. NYSERA, who VMware bought for $1.2 billion, helped create the, you know, the networking stack, which was Neutron, uh, for OpenStack. So they helped create that. And one of the things I took away from OpenStack uh, Summit in Atlanta was that VMware's no longer really in the driver's seat there. There's a whole bunch of people involved. There's a lot of challenges in the networking space. And while there are VMware people involved in it, um, there, there's more that needs to be done there, and so lots of people are getting involved in it. So VMware, first of all, uh, I, I'd say th the defensive pit place of what they're doing is if you talk to CIOs and say, I want to build a private cloud and how do I do this? The number one thing that they're probably hearing the most about is OpenStack. So mm -hmm. if a CIO comes to o VMware and says, hey, I want to do OpenStack. VM wants to say, of course, we can do that for you. And of course, the best OpenStack you should buy is VMware's OpenStack. There's, so there's that, and 
Also, you know, if you look at the entire ecosystem for, uh, for OpenStack, you know, it's not huge revenue dollars. I, I mean, I have not seen a report that says exact numbers, but if there's $100 million worth of distributed uh, software sold for that, that, that's probably about where it is, as opposed to, you know, VMware's a you know, five to six billion mm -hmm. dollar company. So it's early enough that VMware can get involved in some ways, uh, you know, to suck the air out of the room in what's going in OpenStack and, and help, in, you know, insert what they're doing in many places. So to kind of shape the direction to hopefully benefit of course customers, but also VMware themselves. So talk about the the offering itself. You mentioned, you know, it's, a, it's essentially OpenStack is an open source framework set of software that you can kind of uh, mold into various flavors. So VMware's got their flavor. It kind of reminds me, or, or similar to what we're seeing in the Hadoop market, um, you know, Hadoop being an open source framework, and then we've got a number of vendors that kind of have their own flavor. So from VMware's perspective, is this a, are they, are they hewing to the open source um, premise here, or are they injecting some of their pr proprietary IP, and what's been the market reaction? Yeah, okay, great question, Jeff. So first of all, the, the, the real open source bigots, if you will, the people that love open source, of course, are you know, throwing you know, mud at VMware and saying this is proprietary and what are they doing? So here's the challenge that we have today. There are you know, dozens of distributions for OpenStack, and interoperability between those stacks really aren't there today. So everybody takes you know, the open source version of it, and then they do what they need to do to make it enterprise ready and add whatever functionality is on top of it. Um, so it, it still needs time to mature. I mean, we're still mm -hmm. only a few years into the development of open source uh, for, for OpenStack. Uh, so there's a lot of work that's going to be done. I'm actually going to pull up a slide just to show you how, uh, you know, VMware fits into all of OpenStack. So if we look at this, uh, there are many different projects that VMware is going to be a part of, and, uh, you know, this shows the touch points. Uh, it, it really is, uh, you know, both at the driver level, things like storage need to work well together. Um, VMware's making sure that uh, products like their vSAN uh, for software-defined storage and NSX, which is their network virtualization, are going to plug uh, straight into OpenStack, uh, but uh, th they've got, I think there's about a dozen projects that VMware is saying, we're putting people on it and, and we're going to be involved in it. Um, so, you know, that there, there's, there's that piece of it. Um, they are contributing back to these communities, so they're not saying we're going to just build our thing on the side. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I, I would not say that it's quite fair to say that VMware is nothing but proprietary, but on the same, you know, on, on the other hand, uh, you know, they are not looking to become, you know, the Red Hat of mm. OpenStack. Uh, Red Hat, of course, is trying to be the Red Hat of OpenStack with, you know, the, the leading distribution out there. VMware is trying to keep their customers from abandoning them, and customers that are looking at a hybrid cloud environment, of course, VMware is the leader in on-premise uh, with their hypervisor, and they don't want to lose that lead any more than what's been chipped chipping away from the likes of Microsoft uh, and uh, the KVM, the free versions. Yeah, two quick notes on that. One is Microsoft is absent when you talk about OpenStack. Uh, Azure, they have their own play. They're doing things like Office 365 and pulling it. Um, and the other piece is if you talk to the people that will be fast to throw stones at VMware, um, for the last two years when I talk to most vendors in the OpenStack community, the number one thing that they say is, this is a great way for you to save money by getting rid of your VMware licenses. And of course, it's not that cut and dry, but you know, VMware has a lot of power in the data center, and therefore they have a lot of licenses, and if I can save money by not spending those licenses, there's money for other things. The real savings, of course, needs to be that this is simpler to do and on the operations side of things, because that's still where uh, the, the, the vast majority of dollars are spent. Mm -hmm. So let's step back even further, get a more of a bird's eye view, and put this in context of the larger cloud discussion. Um, when people think cloud, they think public cloud, they think AWS. Um, increasingly, they're starting to think a little bit about Google. Where does not just VMware's play here, but OpenStack generally uh, fit in this whole private versus public cloud? Where are we in that conversation at this point? Right, so as I said earlier in the discussion, you can use OpenStack to build a public cloud, and companies like IBM and HP are doing that. Uh, and Red Hat is partnering with Dell and others to be able to take their distribution and make a public cloud. But most companies that are taking 
OpenStack are doing it for private deployments. I think the number I heard was you know, roughly 70% of all OpenStack deployments are going to be kind of on-premise in that private cloud environment, so that's where it lives. Uh, so you know, absolutely that's going to go head-to-head -head with you know, things like Azure, uh, what Rackspace is doing. Of course, Rackspace was one of the, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Rackspace, we wouldn't have OpenStack. <laughs> so th th you know, they you know, worked on that code, brought it forward, and allowed the uh, community to take it over. Um, so uh, I would say that you know it's a little bit different than the public cloud, and it's really hitting a different part of the market than say AWS is today. Uh, they are targeting the developers. Um, it, it is very much a developer conference if you go to any of the OpenStack shows, um, but they are trying to hit uh, also eventually the mainstream applications. So you know th there there's you know, potential to be competition between the various OpenStack offerings in AWS, and of course, if we're talking VMware, uh, VMware probably sees Amazon as enemy number one. Mm. Uh, so I understand there was also an announcement at the show about Docker. Now, Docker's been getting a lot of coverage. Uh, we're not talking about the pants, we're talking about something very different. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Docker. I, I, I'm curious to learn more about it, and what, was the, what were some of the announcements that came yeah, out last so, week? Yeah, so, so Jeff, along with uh, OpenStack, uh, and VMware's also going to be uh, just supporting some efforts in open compute, and with Docker. For the, those that don't know, uh, Docker is related to, it's a containerization technology, so Linux containers, uh, LXC, if you look, the, they've been around for many years. Uh, companies like Google uh, have been implementing them uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in you know, very large uh, amounts. So um, it, it, it is not really a virtualization technology. It is a way to separate my application management from my infrastructure management, uh, which of course reminds me a little bit of what VMware did for compute. Uh, it, it really allowed me with uh, base virtualization over 10 years ago, rather than managing things at the server level, I could manage things at the virtual machine level, which meant that I just took my operating system and my application and had those at a one-to-one -one ratio. Docker allows me to just focus on the application and two things. First of all is I can have multiple applications running on a single operating system and I can also have applications that are going to span across multiple servers. So, Jeff, in your space, you're looking at all these you know, wonderful you know, analytics applications that you know, are truly scale-out architectures. They are a great fit for things like Docker. Docker also allows me to, since I, I can separate my application from my infrastructure, it will sit on basically bare metal, so if I've got just Linux, latest version of, I think it's 3.8 of Linux, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 fully supports Docker as a first class citizen. What VMware announced is that they are working to make Docker a first class citizen inside a VM. So whether I've got just basic Linux, whether I've got virtualization, uh, such as with VMware, uh, Microsoft's working on uh, things with Docker, and the cloud, I can do uh, Docker with Amazon, with Google, and once again, Microsoft's working there. So no matter what your infrastructure choice, you know, bare metal, hypervisor, or cloud, Docker's going to span across those. Definitely the hottest technology I've seen in many years. Uh, we did a great interview with uh, Docker CEO Ben Galoob at VMworld. Uh, we caught up with uh, the, the founder of uh, Docker, uh, Solomon Hikes at Red Hat Summit. Uh, so uh, one we're keeping a close eye on in, in, in its early days. I mean, storage needs to be fixed for Docker. Uh, security needs to be worked on. Uh, but um, you know, huge potential to really enable the application, mm -hmm. which of course is the whole reason that we have infrastructure. Yeah, and it's another example of a technology coming out of the web scale companies and, and making its way slowly but surely to the enterprise. Absolutely. Uh, great, so uh, final question, when are we going to see you next uh, on theCUBE at events you know, covering these topics? Well, uh, so uh, first of all, uh, for if we're talking about OpenStack, uh, our, our West Coast team out in Palo Alto is going to be covering the OpenStack Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. So while the uh, OpenStack Summit is held every six months, once in the US and once in Europe, uh, a, a group of companies realize that while a lot of the innovation and activity for OpenStack is happening in the Valley, so they want to hold a regular meeting there and we're, we're excited to bring theCUBE there we're going to have a lot of the thought leaders uh, of the space there. Um, we'll be at Oracle Open World, uh, and, and of course, uh, Amazon reInvent's another big one that we're going to be talking about cloud. So uh, we're definitely looking for where OpenStack fits, you know, and lots of pieces of the ecosystem, and uh, you know, the broader discussions of cloud as the cube rolls through uh, with all the fall, fall tour. All right, great. Well, we will keep an eye out for that. Uh, Stu, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll be back with our next episode of Cube Conversations.